anytime I'm together with a group of people in the trade, photographers, whatnot, there tends to be certain people that uh, would prefer to sh talk shop, talk f-stops, talk shutter speeds, and really what's a lot more important to me than that is to see the work and to really get excited about that. If there's a technical thing that I would like to know about a particular photograph, I'd, I would address it at that time, but what I'm really interested in doing is seeing the imagery rather than seeing the technique behind the imagery, um, especially with, with the philosophy of keeping the technique very, very simple. I feel any communications problem can be communicated and solved in a tabletop situation. The avenues I've chose to, uh, to shoot in are uh, basically still life work, which keeps you in a small working area. And that's more or less the two by two philosophy. Uh, some ideas come in more grandiose scale and demand other skills from other different kinds of photographers. Where I feel my expertise lies is in, uh, in a much smaller controllable area. Terry, this year, instead of doing the calendar as we had done last year, where it's primarily historic material, this is going to be really dealing with international classics, and so it'll be primarily contemporary material. And we'll be starting with cowboy boots and teddy bears, and one of the things we think will be a really strong element will be baseball as one of those, because it's a classic in both cultures. Uh, I've had the good fortune of working on a project for now, f this is our fifth year, and it's a calendar for the American President Lines Company. And uh, in the pre-production meeting, we will discuss uh, different possibilities for photographic situations. Okay. And, uh, I think that could be done without any big problem. Great. You think there'll be a problem getting props on that, Holly? Should be no problem. We'll do some research and find out where the um, equipment's made and see what colors it comes in, and like red. And I had the good fortune of studying under a guy by the name of Andy Rossetti, who's a very successful working commercial photographer in Cleveland these days. And Andy uh, had the good sense in teaching of, of showing heroes, and I think heroes are extremely important to have. Uh, he, years ago, turned me on to people like Edward Weston, uh, Irving Penn, and Phil Marco. Uh, unfortunately, today Phil Marco is shooting television only, so his uh, still life imagery is, is sort of complete. Uh, but the other people are uh, accessible and uh, continue to, other than Weston, who's not around, but uh, Penn is certainly still working. And uh, I think it's important to have these teacher heroes and to go after people and to find people, whether it be in libraries or if you can physically take workshops or if you have the excellent fortune of assisting for them, to um, have them rub off on you and to study them and to, and to sort of start formulating an opinion as to what is good and what isn't good and why, what, why one photograph works for you and one photograph doesn't. And I also think it's important to be able to articulate uh, why you feel that that's true. Uh, it's one thing to be able to look at a photograph and say, God, I like it, but it's a whole other thing to say, I like it because. So I, I really feel like Andy, my original teacher, um, taught me those skills and allowed me to, it, it really frees you up because then all you have to do is learn the technique and the technique is simple. If you learn how to see, you've, you've learned something that is invaluable and unique. The, the choice of the elements was, was pretty well decided when I saw them coming out onto the prop table, the beautiful red-orange color of the, of the uh, chest protector against a, a green-black mask is, has some inherent gut-wrenching kind of contrast, and it tells the story. Adding the baseball asymmetrically within that mask sort of took it off the, the uh, composition of being totally designed and, and uh, helped uh, communicate what the photograph is all about, and that's baseball. Once I approach the or leave the prop table with the elements that I've decided on, I tend to have a fairly uh, loose idea of how I'm going to approach the photograph. Generally, I don't wheel a camera in until uh, I'm, I'm pretty well wired as far as the composition is concerned. My basic lighting philosophy, in that I'm using a single light source and, and generally a bank light, uh, could be compared to uh, having a window light at home where if you put an object next to that window or 
if you put that window above that object or to the side or the back, there's only so many places, maybe four or five general areas that, the, that one can physically allow for that uh, relationship to happen. Light is light, whether it be a, a window light coming out of your, your uh, bathroom or wherever, uh, or you're in the studio and you have a softbox. And when you keep the variables that controlled, you start treating light as a tool and not as a great mystery. And you start seeing what a light can do to an object. And it, it simplifies the whole matter. Uh, it, it sort of takes the emphasis off the light and puts the emphasis on, what am I trying to say with the light? And that's really what makes photographer A and photographer B different. When you're using a large format system, 4x5 or 8x10, you, in order to get the sharpness, you need to use a smaller aperture. F64 may not be the optimum sharpness on that particular lens, but in terms of getting things from top to bottom in a two or three foot area sharp, you need to be using working at small apertures. Give me a little bit of a front tilt. Okay, Brian, stop me down. Let you film. Keep the shadows a little mysterious. Keep people wondering what's going on. Add that drama and that three-dimensionality to things. And it all sort of works with the one light source close to the subject philosophy.